Are you putting off treating your hearing loss? If you are in today's Healthy Habits, we are talking with Dr. Lana Joseph Ford, the founder and CEO of High Level Speech and Hearing. She is here to tell us about how putting off this treatment can actually affect us in the long term. Welcome back, Dr. J. Good morning, Malik. Thanks so much for being here. And I'm really interested in this topic, as I am with all of your topics. My first question I want to ask you, though, is what age do we typically see people starting to experience hearing loss? Mm -hmm. Great question, Malik. So um, hearing loss, usually it's, it's a gradual process. It deals with nerves. It's the auditory nerves or nerves in the auditory system. And these nerves actually become damaged over time. So hearing loss, as I mentioned earlier, does happen over time gradually. Usually at about the age of 65 years old is when we see a lot of patients on average start to show up to the audiologist and ask questions about hearing and become interested in hearing aids. And I'm not sure if it's because it's, you know, an older age, that age is okay at that point with wearing hearing aid devices or if it's just because of the way the science kind of goes. So at about the age of 65 is when we start seeing it, but it can definitely happen a lot sooner. I've had lots of patients who are much younger who have come to me for hearing aid support. Very interesting. And that's why it's so important to go and get your hearing checked, because if you don't know you have hearing loss, then you might not treat it. Because what happens if we don't treat hearing loss for a long period of time? Mm -hmm. If we don't treat hearing loss, we can get what we call auditory deprivation along with other different things. But first, let's talk about that, right? So auditory deprivation is actually when the brain becomes accustomed to not hearing certain sounds. And it's just because all of those hair cells that I mentioned about before, um, they just become damaged and they die and they're not receiving any type of stimulation to keep them going. So they die off and slowly or gradually, we start to see a decline in hearing. But in addition to auditory deprivation, there's other things, social isolation, uh, misinformation. There are some statistics that even show a decrease in income as related to hearing loss or not treating hearing loss. So, so now I'm going to be messing with my money? Oh, no. You definitely yes. want to get it treated for mm -hmm. sure then. And what's interesting, everyone, is that there are exercises that you can do to actually strengthen your hearing. One of them is listening to music. How can that help? That's absolutely right. So um, if you're actually just listening to music, it, music has different pitches or frequencies and tones. And when you're, they call it like when you're pitch perfect, usually we'll see musicians that are pitch perfect. It helps them to be able to distinguish between those frequencies. The problem with that though, however, with hearing loss, those frequencies no longer become distinguishable. So different when those nerves that I mentioned before start to die, they start to really affect the frequencies or pitches that you're capable of hearing. So listening to music can be helpful for some people, but not for all, especially depending on the type of hearing loss you have. Really interesting, Dr. J. And another thing that we can do to help strengthen our hearing is actually meditate. How can that be a form of a listening exercise? Yes, yeah, so, so meditation is extremely helpful because with auditory, auditory deprivation, I'm sorry, um, with that, what's happening is that your hair cells or those nerves in the auditory system have not been able to focus or concentrate on certain pitches and frequencies. So when we're meditating, what we're doing is we're taking the time to really focus on those frequencies and stimulate those nerves that really haven't had a chance to be stimulated in a long time. So meditating helps. Um, there are auditory training uh, programs that you can utilize that can help. So there's lots of different things that can help with that. Very, very interesting, Dr. J. And I just think it's so important that we do learn more about you know, hearing loss and all of that. For people who are wondering, when you come into an appointment with you, you do give them a hearing test and that's how you detect if they have hearing loss or not? Correct. That's exactly what we do. We'll take the hearing test. We'll let them know, hey, whether or not they have hearing loss or um, if they have completely normal hearing. And also we'll tell them what they can do to improve their hearing or what they can do to treat it. So, yes, we provide all of those services. 
and some of the ways you treat it, getting a hearing aid, which is Absolutely. the only option, but there are other options as well. Dr. J, as always, thank you, my sister, for joining us this morning, listening to music and meditating, two things that I will be happy to do later on today. Thank you so much for joining us. And hey, if you have more questions about hearing loss, Dr. J has two high-level speech and hearing locations, one in New Orleans on Magnolia Street, and the other is in Harahan on Jefferson Highway. To set up an appointment, you can call 504-345-345. 2984 or check out this website on your screen, highlevelhearingnola.com.